Pregaish. Pregaish. Again, paired with the, uh, the quaternary function, uh, we're going to step forward, out and around to make the circular form. We can come up to the hanary if we like, back away from it, just as we back away from the uh, from the uh, Oshi Toshi earlier. And to go to Udagaish, this time we're going to code the guy. And it's right down here. So it has this stretching apart function. It has this same circularity. It has this moving away and stepping through. What actually causes the throw to go should not be a twisting of the wrist. It should not be any pressure at all. In fact, if he had no wrist, if we chopped his hand off and left him with just no hand right here, but we only had a forearm to deal with. So we just make this like a, yeah, there you go. And we were to run into this forearm boom, and find ourselves in this Oshitoshi type position. As we move away, the thing that throws the man is not twisting this structure. The thing that throws the man is as his foot lands here, our foot goes here plus a little. So we're extending a step. His weight is falling onto a foot, and we're actually taking a foot plus a few inches. So it has to do with the timing of the foot landing and the timing of our weight going through this point. As he puts his foot down, my foot lands with it. My foot lands with it and stretches. And that's actually where the throwing dynamic comes from. If we become dependent on curling on the wrist, twisting the wrist back, cranking it down, trying to make pain out of it, all of those have their useful points and purposes. They're all interesting and necessary. It's good to explore them all. But they are beside the point in terms of making them go upside down. They are uh, useful addendums, but they are not the heart of the technique. The heart of the technique we can do even if he has no wrist at all. And so, it's a function of the timing of that step in extension. The Kodigaishi function, the reversal of the wrist function, can then follow through again if we like. Around the corner, and now we go with the step. Right here at the end, as we make contact, reversing the wrist this way as well. So it has a, uh, a nice function of uh, locking at the end if we like. We can lock it face up or face down, around the corner, up. There we go. <laughs> Locking out here. Or we could push through, roll him over, and come back to a hanary form if we like. So they're both quite possible right there. They're both very easy to do and useful. Be very gentle with all those rollover forms and all those functions of working into the wrist. Those twisted potentials, uh, reversing of the wrist itself, again, probably more interesting from a perspective of actually injuring or disabling the joint. Less interesting in terms of controlling functional mobility and executing the throw. That's happening with the sense of gravity and feet. Mainly what you get in a standing form from the curling of the wrist action is a little distortion of posture. It may be sufficient to do a job for you. But uh, and on people whose wrists are really tight, you got a tight wrist, and say, hey, I think I'll just do this thing. Oh, wow. Step on a foot too. <laughs> Screw him up. Just deal with the wrist in here. But when people uh, focus on the wrist because it's protegation, I think they mistake the larger dynamic. And so that's what I've tried to uh, express here.